today on Divorce Court. I'm here today to see if my relationship is even worth saving. I'm tired of my fiance being unattentive to me and putting me second towards everything that he does. I think it's ridiculous that she complains that I don't spend time with her when I'm working 16 hour shifts, three days a week, doing doubles trying to provide for my family. When it's time to do things as a family, he might want to do what he might not want to. If she don't change, then she got, she got a long road ahead of her by herself. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Lakia Hubbard and Maurice Ayers. The two of you have been dating for four years. Uh, you're currently pregnant with his baby, correct? Yes. And uh, you're wondering whether you should get married. Ms. Hubbard, you're 25. Mr. Ayers, you're 33. Uh, you uh, love each other, but you have some issues. So if you've come to me for, on or before the vows, you've uh, taken my compatibility test, uh, given me your marriage license with permission to tear it up, should I think this union is ill-advised. And I'm going to start with you, Ms. Hubbard. Why don't you tell me why you love him, but why you're concerned about getting married? I love him very much. He's a great guy. He's very supportive. Uh, but I'm concerned about getting married because I think he's just very unattentive. He just isn't supportive of me at all. You know, I'm, I am 25 and I've been diagnosed with breast cancer. I also have lupus and I have a tumor in my head and I just feel just very unsupported at times. Do you have a lot of family around or is he pretty much it? It's, it's pretty much him, my two sisters and my mom. That's mm -hmm. all I have around me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when did you first start battling cancer? What? Last year. Last year? Yeah. But you've had lupus since you were... I had lupus since I was in high school. In high school. What is he not doing for you that you would like for him to do? Uh, you know, just educate himself. You know, just have conversations with me about what's going on with my health, come to doctor's appointments with me. You know, there's been times where I've been in the hospital and, you know, he shows up six hours later, like it's, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ayers, uh, what do you say about that? Well, I feel like I support her a lot. Um, besides financially, I'm near for her as far as her health-wise. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard if she don't schedule her health-wise around my free days. Mm -hmm. Since I work all the time and I have to provide for the household, well, let, let, let me get her to co-sign on that. She, he does, in fact, take care of you financially. Is that true? Yes, he takes care of the household. He, uh, but, you know, I... Basically, I'm, not, I'm, I'm at home right now, mm -hmm. so I'm living off my personal... Savings? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. But he well, does take care of the household. Mm -hmm. And he's doing right in that, in, right. In that area. Perfect. He's doing right, doing great. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Mr. Ayers, um... What do you think she's missing, then? You say you, you are supportive. What do you think she's missing? I just think she has she lacks the inability of to appreciate what's in front of her. Mm -hmm. She just doesn't appreciate what's right in front of her. For within the three years and the four years that we've been together, we have excelled as a couple at a high magnitude, quicker than I've ever known anybody else to do. So mm -hmm. we actually met on Instagram. Then from there, we had a baby. Then we got into a relationship. But then that time period, we have a, a, a apartment, we have a car, everything is fine. Bills don't get paid late, there's nothing wrong. So I really don't see what's the issue that she has, but the issue she has is everything. Mm -hmm. What is your major concern with her? The issue that she has with everything. You mean she's always dissatisfied? Is with everything. With everything. What would you like him to do that he's not doing? I just want him to be a practical, Man, like he's ridiculous. Like it'll be times where he goes out, and he he he's been keeping his phone on silent since the day we met. But you would think that because I've became more sickly, he would listen out for his phone. It's been plenty of times where he tells me, you know, he'll go out. You know, it's it's fine. I don't bother him when he goes out. But he'll be like, I'll be in at one a.m. and I'm like, oh, okay, fine. It's six a.m. and now I'm paranoid. I'm petrified. So I'm getting myself and my and our three-year-old dress to go canvas the neighborhood to go look for him because his phone is is, a, is magically dead. You know, he can easily be a philosopher. Now, Mr. Ayers, her issue is, with respect to this, is like, look, I'm sick. I'm home. Have your phone on. Did she miss that part? I mean, did, do you not have your phone on? Do you have it on silent? Phone, Are you hard to reach? My phone is on. My phone is reachable. She can reach me. It's not like she can't reach me. 
there's times where she can't reach me because my phone is off, but my phone dies very fast. I don't have one of them iPhones or nothing like that. So it's my your phone, phone on silent? Be, it's dead. No, it's on. When I'm outside, my phone is on. on it's silent. not on silent at all. It's on, but it dies. Uh -huh. So after it dies, I don't, I don't really think about, oh, let me call and check in on her. I'm out. What do you say about you not answering your okay. phone? Okay, let me ask you this. When you are home, do you do ever have a moment to sit down together and just talk to one another? Not about the issues of the day, not about uh, what's happening, but about how you feel, how you're doing, how was your day, that kind of thing. Does that ever happen? Yeah, we yeah, do that every we do day. That we have dinner. We eat dinner together as a family. We, that's a priority, him, uh, myself, and our daughter. We eat dinner. We talk. Now, don't you feel that's a form of support and appreciation and concern that he's there as a family member talking with you about your day, sitting down to a meal? Don't you? Do you see that as supportive? I do. I see that as support. But then, five minutes after we're finished eating, his plate is empty. He sleeps. I don't think, I don't know. She think I'm a machine. Like, I'm supposed to be up to 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I got to work from 8 to 12 a.m. That's 8 in the morning, 12 a.m. if I'm doing a double. Uh-huh. So I don't know what she exactly she expect for me to be. I mean, we eat and we sit down, we talk. I tell her all the time the greatest thing is when I come in the house and I get to see her and I get to see my daughter. Does he but say then, that? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to hurt him. I, I know he doesn't want to hurt me. It's, I, I just, I'm unsure what to do in, you know, in those situations where I feel like my back is against, against, the, against the wall, wall. and he isn't, he isn't listening to me, and I know it isn't right, and it's not something that I'm proud of. Tell me about her response to your, any concerns that she has in the home, all the issues that she has. How does she respond to them? Well, first, it's not even how she responds. It's the way that she indicates them to me in general. Mm -hmm. She could easily ask me for anything, but she doesn't ask me for them. It's always a, in a yelling process. Like, she don't mm -hmm. like asking for stuff. So if she wants something, so if, like, if she wants the house to be clean, she won't just say, oh, babe, come on, let's go clean the house. It'd be more of a, man, this house is dirty. I'm tired of this house being dirty all the time. Man, I it's all attitude house. and not information. Instead of just saying, babe, let, help me, let's go clean the house. And I'm saying yes. I never say no to her. So whatever she want to do, we could do it without it. Is he do right is about that? Is he rarely says no to you? It he, depends. He mostly does as you ask? Sort of, maybe. Sort of, maybe. That's pretty good, you know, in a relationship, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. If, if he mostly does what you ask, you're doing pretty good over there. Just let me say. Let me say that. But when you want something from him, do you just ask for it, or is there instant attitude with it? I've tried to calm down on the instant attitude. It has been, you know, instant attitude, and that's something that I just needed to work on with my, in, in, within myself in general. But I have toned it down. I mean, it, if the house is, if the house is dirty, or if not, the house is never dirty. But if it, the house needs to be picked up because we mm -hmm. do have a three-year-old, mm -hmm. why can't you just pick it up? Like it's been times I've left something on the floor in the same place for a week and it's still there, but because he's walking over it, it's like you. So you're not going to pick it up? Let, let, let me tell you, Miss Hubbard. Okay. Why it's still there? Okay. Because it doesn't bother him. Mm -hmm. That's why my stuff is all over the floor. <laughs> Took my husband five years. You know. She doesn't pick it up because she doesn't, it doesn't bother her. It doesn't, okay. you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so it's not any more than that. And when you put a whole lot of emphasis on it, it's like, why couldn't he just pick it up? Like, like, mm -hmm. It doesn't bother him. He doesn't, you know, it doesn't pick up, so I gotta ask him. Because mm -hmm. he, he, he doesn't realize that it's there. Let me ask you this. Okay. When you don't get your way, do you get angry? Is there a lot of hooping and hollering and yelling? And is that often? Yes, it's yes. often. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you like that it's that way? No, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Do you know why it's that way? I think, I don't, I don't know if this is like a, something valid, but I, I'm, like I used to be in an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. So I met him maybe two years after that and I got into that relationship when I was 16 and I got out when I was like 19 going on 20. Mm -hmm. So it's, I don't know what it is. I think I just... You don't know how to resolve conflict right. without going, getting and into to, more conflict. Right, and I don't want to hurt him. I, I know he doesn't want to hurt me. It's, I, I just, 
I'm unsure of what to do in you know in those situations where I feel like my back is against, it's against the, wall the wall and he isn't he isn't listening to me and I know it isn't right and it's not something that I'm proud of. Is there one thing you would like him to hear that you don't think he hears from you? You say he doesn't listen to you. You don't feel heard. Is there one thing he really needs to hear? I appreciate him. Oh, that was wonderful. I thought you were going to ask something. <laughs> uh, say something that you didn't do. Yeah. Do you feel like she appreciates you? <laughs> you can say no. It's not that, I'm not saying no. I'm we not don't saying acknowledge no it. that she doesn't appreciate me. I think she loves me dearly. I don't think that she appreciate everything that's in front of her. And when I mean everything that's in front of her, the fact that we are stable, the fact that she doesn't have to stress about any bills, the fact that she doesn't have to stress about anything but her, her health, and her kid. I, I do all the stressing. She doesn't understand that. I do all the stressing. I take the burden in order that to make sure that she doesn't have to. But she creates stressful environments. I understand exactly what's going on here. We were leaving to do laundry, and he takes down a bag of laundry and tells me, take the shopping cart full of laundry. And he leaves the baby upstairs with me. How am I supposed to get downstairs with a shopping cart full of laundry and, and a, a three-year-old? Now that sounds like just like a dumb dude move. Is Maurice supportive of Lakia's battles with cancer and lupus? Tell us what you think at facebook.com slash divorce court. Divorce court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Divorce Court. I went through you guys' compatibility tests. I didn't see anything really odd or unusual, but I think I know what the deal is with you guys. I really, really do. You over there, I asked, what's wrong with you? And what'd you say? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong with everybody, but I don't think, as I said, I don't think any major, I'm not doing nothing. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say it had to be earth shattering. I, it had to be insightful. What's wrong with you? You want me to give you a hint? Um, I think my biggest thing is the fact that I hold stuff in. Yeah. You, you don't express yourself I don't well. really express myself You, well. you don't. And that's what's killing her over yeah, there. Yeah, I don't express my... And I'm very nonchalant. So mm -hmm. that, that makes her very upset, the fact that when she's saying stuff, I'm listening to everything that she's mm -hmm. saying, but she wants me to have... I don't know what type of reaction she wants me to have because no matter what, what reaction, if I say something, it's an issue. If I don't say something, then it's an issue. So I'm just in a win losing situation. It's the things you do. What, what does he do? I mean, just for instance, a couple of days ago, we were leaving to do laundry, and... It's a shopping cart. We live in a walk-up. Mm -hmm. So it's a shopping cart full of clothes. He takes down a bag of laundry and tells me, take the shopping cart out. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'm thinking I'm just carrying the shopping cart down the stairs alone. No, it's a shopping cart full of laundry. And he leaves the baby upstairs with me. How am I supposed to get downstairs with a shopping cart full of laundry and, and a, a three-year-old? Like, like, he just, he does... Like Does he just, now that sounds like just like a dumb dude move. He so doing stuff is, like that is, is all he, the time. Does he do that kind of stuff all the time, but it's really like just he's not thinking as opposed to being disrespectful? It's a lot of not thinking. Like, I, I, I can't stress the fact that about the phone. You know, like the phone thing is really, 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 really an issue. And I really don't think that he gets it. I stress it about twice a week and he just, he, he doesn't get, get it. it. It's been emergencies that have broken out, and I cannot reach him. Are, 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 you, are in the you hearing morning. what she's saying over there? Yeah, I'm she's dealing. No, look, look, hang on though. I mean, this is why I called the she, wedding off. You, you can appreciate all. She may appreciate all that she has in front of you, but she's worried about dying. She's worried about dying every day, mm -hmm. and it's hard to say. Look, wow, it's it. It would be nice if you could just appreciate that and not have to worry about dying. But she's worried about dying. Mm -hmm. And when you're worried about dying, everything else takes a back seat. Everything else takes a back seat. And she needs you to be there to support her in that big fear. You need to be reachable for her to be relaxed. Mm -hmm. 
And when people are frightened and frustrated, it comes out in anger. Fear lets out all the adrenaline and all that same stuff that does anger. And so she's fearful all the time. So that's why she's giving you all that anger and stuff when you don't help assuage that fear by just being available. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. How'd I, how'd I do? Perfect. Do you think Lakia and Morris can resolve their issues and be happily married? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Ms. Hubbard, I think Mr. Eric cares a great deal. He just doesn't know how to express it. Men don't do well with illness. You know, when they're faced with a big, bad, ugly, and can't solve it, they, they either shy away or get angry. You know what I mean? So it isn't that he doesn't care. I think it's difficult for him to express how he feels. And I think it's difficult for him to, to you know, stand there and say, I can't fix the biggest problem that she has. And it's, it's hard for him. I think you should make a point of trying a little harder to, to communicate your care to her in a meaningful fashion. I, I do. My thing is this. How often are you going to call off the wedding? It's yeah. not that she just called it off once. It's the fact that she calls it off. So if you continuously to keep calling something off, do you expect me to sit down and have a conversation with you? If you're going to yeah, do it, it, then you're going to do it. Ms. Ms. Hubbard, men, men aren't going to sit down and talk to you about a whole lot of stuff. It doesn't mean they don't care. It just means they don't talk. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, if you need me, you know what I mean? They're, yeah. they're, they're not going to do this. They're for how I feel, with baby, and this made me feel like, they don't do all of that. And some men are less like that than others. My husband, if you can get seven words out of him, you're doing good. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, it's... They're not that expressive, and you and and don't take it as a lack of interest in you. They do love more than they say love. Mm -hmm. My father, no first time my father hugged me, but I was thirty six years old. I remember he just had had a stroke, so he, it kind of made him a little silly. But but you know, he worked, he brought home money, made sure we were okay. That's what he did. Mm -hmm. he, with no <laughs> none of that. Some of them just aren't good at that. But I'm going to say this to you. You got to learn a little something because girlfriend here is under extraordinary pressure. She doesn't have a support system behind her. She's pregnant with a baby. She's already got a three-year-old. She is facing life-threatening illnesses that people don't face in their entire lives. And she's doing it all at 25. You need to be a little bit more of a superman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. She, 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 she's got, she's carrying 3,000 pounds around with her every day, every day. And she needs somebody to share that weight with her. And you share that weight by sitting with her and hearing her and listening to her and expressing concern and being available. And Ms. Hubbard, you encourage a man to do that by taking off the anger. It doesn't get you anything. I know you're afraid. I get that. It's, you're not a bad person. You're just scared to death. I'd be scared to death, too. But you have to back up off the anger, and he'll become more expressive. He'll become more caring and loving. He ain't going nowhere. But you just got to... And let him come close to you. Draw him in. Don't, you know, right. beat him in. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're a beautiful young lady. I Thank wish you. you all the best. Thank I you. really, really do. Get, get, take the ring back. Don't throw it at him no more. Go ahead and get married. Love one another. Get a better phone. <laughs> <laughs> this matter is a joke. I'm going to be a better person by being more attentive, probably do more dates. When I come home, give her at least some time to sit and talk to you more and just listen to you. I think after listening to what the judge had to say today, we're going to be together forever. We're going to set a date to get married and move on with our life. I agree. Hello. Tell me more.